thank you for the knowledge of the practice. Um, let's look forward, hands up. Actually, today we'll start like this. Bring your hands up like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about going forward and back. And notice that as we do that, the, the body is moving. The arms are really not. The arms are really just relatively staying in place. But there's a feeling here. You can feel the pull and the push from the feet to the hand. Now, as we always do, we're going to start turning to the side. When we turn to the side, the hands come with us. When we turn to the front, the hands aren't moving. It's just the lower body essentially moving. And you can feel that when, especially when you come forward, there's a, there's a pull to extend. When you come back, there's a pull to retract. And you can start to ex ex accentuate that a little bit. So that as you come back, you can feel uh, extend the dynamic of the motion out of your hands more. So you're pulling back and you're pushing forward. Pulling back, pushing forward. Now, as you push forward, open the palms to the front, and as you come back, bring them to face each other. Breath in, breath out. So as the forward motion comes out, the hands turn out and you want to end up actually having a slight angle to the outside with both hands here, and then it comes in and back. So the only part of it that's really distinct right now is this, that's got to be out. And then back. Breathe out. Breathe in. Now, breathe out, push all the air out and hold for a moment. In. Two more. Last one on the side, breathe in. And breathe out. And push and open. The hands feet together. Breathe. Bend out. Push down. Around the feet and up. And out. Shake out. And then put your uh, right foot forward. So, right foot forward, and we know this well enough now, right? We have back and forth. We're just holding our hands in front as if we're holding, you know, a five pin bowling ball in here. But we're not moving our arms at all, it's just our lower body. But our awareness can definitely go into the hands. You start to think about, I like to say, you can think about what does it mean to have hands? What does it feel like? What is the feeling of having a hand? And just see if that can grow in your mind. And then as we do this, and of course, breathing uh, out and breathing in, as we go forward and back, is we're gonna turn to the side. But again, the arms aren't moving, it's just the body. Breathe in, breathe out. Allow yourself to stay aware of your hands, what the feeling of having hands is as you move. And you can be aware here too that there's a tendency to want to contract the muscles of the hand as you move. 
Don't let that happen. Stay very relaxed in your hands. So there's no uh, mus muscle use. It's just they're floating through space. And now you can start to allow the hands to travel away as the momentum pushes them and travel back as the momentum carries them back. So a little bit more of a dynamic movement, but all from the lower body. And as we start to go forward, start to push open and back. Push open and back. And it's a push and then a spreading, a parting, like a bird's feathered or wings coming out. It's one of the ideas. So you want to think of that as a wide spread across energetically. And three very uh, distinct, complete exhalations. One, all the air out. Two, and three. And be together. One more cleansing breath, so breathe in, breathe out, around the hips, down, around the toes, up, a clip and push, shake your breath. You know, a light horse riding stance, not a really intense one, but a moderate one, hands up. And now we're going to bring the left knee to the left elbow. When the knee comes up, contract your stomach muscles like you're doing a little crunch, okay? Like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now keep your hands up. Think of protecting your head. Basically, one foot will step forward, drop the knee, come back up and switch. Okay? Two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll bring the left knee up and stay balanced. Circle the foot to the outside, inside, knee to the outside, inside. And now take the whole hip outside. Inside. Hold it. Down. Other knee up. Or other foot up. Outside. Ankle. Inside. Outside knee. Inside. Outside hip. Inside. And then. Shake it. Put your feet out. Settle. Bring your hands up. Holding the barrel. Making the circle with the arms. The idea of a, of a circle here, but held this way. Relax. Relax your shoulders. Relax your hips. Your back straight, though. Always remember the top of the back of the head is going up. Hips are shaking down. Drop the hands. 
Before we stretch, we'll work on one of the silk reading techniques. So this is the fundamental movements in Tai Chi. So this is absolutely part of all kinds of movements everywhere. Bring your right hand up. And now imagine rectangle, top corner, top corner, bottom corner, bottom corner. And instead of going at 90 degrees, you're going to curve it. You're going to circle the square, as they say. And you're going to go from top corner to top corner. And as you go to the other top corner, your palm turns in. And as it goes past your eyes, you look at it. And then as it goes to the other top corner, it's actually turned around. Then the back of the hand falls to the bottom corner. And then the hand comes back across from this position. As it crosses the center, the palm is forward. And then it comes here and it climbs up to where it started. And then I come back to center and leave the hand to take a moment of rest. Okay, so that's the full cycle. One. Make sure it's climbing up. And then you come back to center to rest. Two. Three. I'm going to do five, but now I'll try to be aware of this hand, the hand that's not doing anything as well as this hand. Connect them. And then last one on the right. Together. Take a moment to take off to the other side. <clears throat> but remember when we were doing this, I said, be aware of the feeling of your hands, what it feels to have hands. That is something that's now in your memory. Your memory then can be accessed at any time. So when I'm doing this, for, so let's say, and I say, be aware of both of your hands, what you, you can do is you can think, oh, what is what do I remember about that feeling of holding my hands like this, even though I'm here? And then that feeling helps kind of develop this, this idea more so. Okay, so that's, that's important. So come back out. Have your moment here to settle, straighten up. Everything's aligned. And then left hand up. But the left hand will do it the whole time. You're thinking of a connection between the two hands. So one. Remember what that felt like. And sort of push that idea into the moment so you still feel it, still feel the connection. And this is the second one, we're doing five. Always coming back to center and rest. Three. Moment. Drop the hand. Be together. One more cleansing breath for the day. Breathe in. Reach as high as you can. Pull down, feel like you're pulling something down. Come past the outside of the ribs and breathe out, push down the back of the legs, all the way to the ankles, around the toes, breathe in, come up the center, straighten, flip at the center of the chest and lean back and push away. 
I'm shaking up. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll come back to that today a bit more just to reinforce it, but there's always a connection between the hands. And so for instance, um, taking off the helmet, that's an obviously a much more dynamic movement with the right arm, the left arm just hangs out. But that doesn't mean the left hand is less important. It actually is the anchor. And it's the point of the, it's the, it's the fulcrum of the lever. It's the thing that is going to give the strength, the leverage into the situation. So for example, someone grabs my right wrist, or my left wrist, I'm sorry, and I turn the grab and I grab them. Now I've got a grip on them and I'm here with that. Then this hand can dance all around that point in order to get all kinds of you know locks or joint locks or whatever done. But this is actually what's making that happen. So there's a very important lesson in keeping the hands alive and connected no matter what's going on exactly. So anyway, let's have a stretch and we'll go to the phone. So feet out, sink down. Side to side. Push your feet forward, sink down, push your knees out, and relax. And now reach forward, elbows about the height of your ears, extend your spine, and stretch. Turn, elbow to the knee, and look up. Straighten your back, turn to your left, and stretch, and relax, and push. Start to run or stretch, heel comes up in the back, sink down. Put the heel in the back down, bring your weight across, and sink into Tai Chi stretch. Bring your hands to the middle, straighten your back. Your right. Push. Turn heel up, sink down. Shift back. Tai Chi stretch. Then pass the floor in the middle, both feet in. Straighten the back of the legs. Breathe in. Straightening up. Breathe up, push forward. And circle the hips. And the other way. And shake it. And then your hands up. And close your fists and open them slowly. But dynamically, feel the, every part of it. Especially when you squeeze and, and extend. And then allow that movement to get bigger and bigger. So the arms are coming in and out. And then they come, so they're fully into the side and fully out to the side. Fully into the side, fully out to the side. Contract the muscles, contract the muscles. When you extend out, go past your shoulders so your rib cage has to open. So this is really good for the respiratory system, the heart and the lungs, getting all of this area to be stretched and open. And then extend. And then put one palm down. One palm up and look at the hand. 
and then go the other way and back and forth. And then down, up, and throw away. One, two, three, and then look up and reach up. Expand your fingertips as high as you can, and then project your energy higher than you can possibly imagine, right through the atmosphere. Reach as high as you can. And tippy toes. So you're going even higher. Bring your heels down and then grab your hand like this with the palm to the ceiling. Twist the palm up here. I'll, I guess I'll do it this way. Twist the palm up, turn to the back corner and pull the arm and the fingers to the back corner with the palm up. Good. And then come back to the center. Switch hands, same thing, other side. And then back to the center. Reach up again, look up. When you go to your tippy toes, turn your palms to the outside. Okay, tippy toes, palms to the outside. And then bring your heels down. Grab your left hand here. Pull to the wall straight behind you. So your fingertips again are trying to be pulled directly behind you. And then trying to go all the way around behind you this way. So you twist as maximally as you can. And then back to the center. Switch hands. And then start by reaching to the back wall. And then right around behind you. And then back to the center. Shake it up. Left hand out. Pull back. In, over, and out. Back. Interest. Brain beat and press. Mission. Right hand. Back over. Back in twist. Maybe. Give it a little shake. And then head side to side, stretching the neck. And then doing the chin comes down, the chin comes up, chin comes down, chin comes up. And then look forward and look up. And look down. And go around. One, two, three. Other way. One, two, three. Okay, warm up. So, this week, in a lot of classes um, so far, I've been touching on some of the background information to the arts, um, particularly the philosophy of the arts to a large degree. So, I'm going to introduce an idea today and sort of carry it through the class. So, I'd get a drink of water if you want it right now, of course, uh, anything like that, uh, it's fine. Um, Okay, so I'm sure at some point I would have mentioned that Tai Chi is not just the art we're practicing, but it's a concept in Taoist philosophy. And it represents the concept of the maximized 
potential of any situation of yin and yang in balance. Everything's balanced and working and it's Tai Chi, the grand ultimate um, uh, accomplishment times, something like that. Um, <clears throat> that. That's part of a bigger cosmology that's worth pointing out. So the idea was that Wu Qi, which is the universe before the universe was known, whatever that might be, existed. And then out of that unknown void came a movement and that movement started to spiral. And that was a thing coming out of the no thing, which is Tai Chi emerging from uh, Wu Qi, the void gives birth, so to speak, to the universe. So that's the, the base of the cosmology. And then, in a very simplified way, the next thing after the Tai Chi, um, well, really technically it would be the Tai Chi, which is the yin and yang, but also the dynamic interchange between the two creates a third component. But then from that third component becomes the five elements. And the five elements um, are a big part of like Chinese medicine and a big part of the philosophy in general. The form is actually based on the five elements in a certain way, which is really abstract. We can't get into it in, in time today, but it's interesting. Um, I just want to touch on one point on that, though. First, the universe has to come into being, and then the elements can come into being, and that could be um, all the different things that make up matter and make up space. And they all have to come into a balance on a planet and then out of that has to come an ecosystem, and out of that has to come multiple dynamics coming together in just the right way, and then a human being can exist. But a human being can't exist without all of that other stuff before it. And so it's very conscious of that, and it's very conscious of the idea that the human being sits at this level way far away from the, the, the source in that sense. Then, so from that, though, you get these five elements, and those five elements then are also the basis of life. And the first one is water. And that's the thing I want to point out today. Because, you know, you probably heard the, the Bruce Lee quote about be like water, my friend. Well, he definitely took that from Taoism and took it from Tai Chi, like largely, I think, too. And so this be like water thing goes all the way back to the founding of, of, of the Taoist philosophy. Water is representative of the kidney and the bladder meridian in Chinese medicine, which is well, the one interesting point about that is that the kidney is a system of flush and bladder of flush and water. It flushes the water out of the body, which is very important. But the metaphysical value is where I'm going to. So if it's the basis of life is water, the metaphysical value is the kidney is prone to fear, but also is the source of willpower. So there's this divide between fear and I don't know, willpower is what they would say. So action, taking action. Because the fear can't be completely, you can't get rid of it, but you can act regardless of it. And that opportunity is at the basis of all life. And this is what the form is, is you're acting out that understanding that regardless of what comes, it's the ability to keep moving and to keep from being frozen with fear, frozen like water becoming ice, that gives life a chance, gives it a, any opportunities have to come from that. So that's actually like the basis of the practice in that sense. So there's a little bit of the philosophy, I'll touch on it again throughout the class. Let's start with the third set, and I believe I know where you guys are at, so you can tell me when I'm wrong, but uh, we'll get there, okay? So from here, starting the third set, carrying the tiger to the mountain and then turning and pushing away. And then turning to the side, single whip. And then turning to the same side and dropping down the right hand for a block against the kick. And then the left hand blocking the punch to the face. And then reaching in spear position one, spear position two, spear position three. And then turning diagonally so, uh, to the corner and pushing out, elbows coming up. Turning to the back, pushing away, catch a sparrow by the tail again. Turning to the corner again, single whip.
And now look first, then walk with your right as your right foot steps across. And then forward and you're into position one, turn, position two, turn, position three, and finally turn, position four. Standing out with the left foot, double block. Take the thermos from one side to the other. Hit with the back of the wrist, reinforced with the left hand. Once, twice, raise the knee, shift back and shift in and push away. Now, look to the corner, single whip. Complete the single whip. And just like the second set, tie up uh, cloud hands. So you come back and you do the three cloud hands. One. Two. Three. And you exit cloud hands to single whip as you always do. Okay, so is that all okay? No? I see some nods and some. Any, any questions? No? No. It looks like Bruno's gonna ask a question. Yeah, we actually went a little bit further. We went oh, to good. snake as well, which is, I believe, it's right afterwards. We just started, yes. we just showed that to us. We didn't really practice that much. Okay, okay, absolutely. Great. That's what I wanted to do today, anyways. Perfect. Okay. Um, I, can, I want to connect this to the concept at the beginning, too. The waters rise and fall, right? The water, the foundation of life. One of the things that you want to learn is that no matter what position you're in, you can still turn things around. That there's no position from which you're just utterly defeated, at least in mentally. You want to keep that in your mind. And this is a good example in the sense that if somebody pushes you, just oh, and you kind of fall, you still have the ability to rise back up. It's, it's, it's a skill that they're developing in that sense. The form is developing. Okay, so if I'm, I'm going to face this way, and I do single whip. I'm looking to my left, and my weight's on my left foot. Now, today we'll start with the right hand, because this one gets neglected a little. I'm going to take my right foot to my left foot, and that means my right hand swings in. See how that movement comes in like this? And then my right foot's going to go out diagonally to the corner, and my right hand's going to come out with it. Okay, so the right hand only, right side of the body only, goes like that. And then this is the point where you drop, you drop the crane wing at that time too. So now putting the left hand into play, I come in, I step out, my right hand swings out, my left hand now comes across like this. Now that should be familiar from the beginning of the class, right? It's coming across here. It comes across here. And as I said, when the dropping happens, the hands open. So the right hand opens. And now you're going to think about doing this. See this motion here? So the hands are kind of, they're connected and they swing this way, but I do it at the lowest possible point. So I don't know if you can see my feet very well there. So I'm coming back like this. I'm dropping and I'm gonna go as low as I literally can. I'm going to swing down and I'm going to aim down the inside of my left hand and the inside of my left foot. And then I'm going to shift my weight forward from there like this. Okay? So it's just, this is a lot of work on the legs, so I won't do too much of it, but here we go. One, swing, back, drop, reach, come forward. Now, your right hand should be just trailing your left, coming this way but your left hand is distinctly out. Then your right foot comes up this way, okay? So that's a lot of leg movement. It's very challenging because you gotta be very, very limber and strong. So I'll do it in a more minimal way. I come in, I just step up to here. I don't have to drop all the way down, but I do need to drop and redirect forward here and then come up with my right hand. Okay, so just practice it at that dynamic for a moment, okay? One, stepping to the outside corner, dropping, swinging forward, and then bring the right foot up. Okay, go ahead, try it a couple times. Okay. 
Yeah, that's looking, you know, in the right place. Yeah. Okay, so let's think about a few things happening here right now, and that'll give it more focus, more clarity. If I'm wrestling with someone, and wrestling means like the arms are intertwined, and you're trying to grab through the back of the head or the shoulders or something. One of the things they'll definitely, you know, would be trying would be pushing. They're trying to push you backwards. So I'm wrestling, and I, I come to a moment where my my weight's on my left, and they push, and I take that push and I absorb it and step backward. So the person pushes, and then instead of hitting a, a, a sort of resistance, you go with the push and you pull them ugh, like this, and that drops them into this back corner here like that. And then you drop down onto them here. So this is, you pull them out this way, their arms are extended, you drop your arms down onto their arms, they come down. Okay, so that's a, that's a good way to think of it. It makes sense enough that it should, should hopefully make sense, is what I mean. So I do that, I drop down, and now there's an option here to just sort of do a, a lock here. You can do a lock and hold the person down and then just come out of that. But what I want you to think about is, their friend is over here, and their friend sees you not have knocked them down. They're running in, and they're gonna try and kick or punch at your face. And you're gonna do something that seems on the surface kind of crazy. So if you imagine I was here, and I just pulled this person down, and I see this person running here, I'm gonna bring my head right at them. And that's gonna be blocked by my left hand. So instead of, well, I'll put it this way. I can't be in this position anymore. I, I, it's a maximal position. If I go further back at all, I'll fall. I have to move forward. So I move forward and block as I do, and that blocks the initial attack, and then the right foot comes up, and we're going to do the next movement from there. Okay? So do this. Take the person and grab them and pull them back and knock them down. Now their friend's running in at you. Swing low and come up underneath their attack and walk with your left. That's the key. That is the snake creeps down, that whole movement. This is the snake, basically. Here. So again, somebody pushes you. You absorb the push and step back. You drop them down. The friend runs in at you, and as they carry kick you in the face, you move at the kick and block them with your left hand. Okay? Now, this is a spear position hand, too. It's got to be very strong as it comes out because that block has to be able to absorb or redirect quite as powerful blow. Okay, so that snake creeps down. Snake creeps down is intertwined with another movement called the golden pheasant stands on one foot. And this is a really cool movement. Um, a, a number of years ago, up on a, 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 the top of a Queen Elizabeth Park, they have a bird sanctuary sort of place. Um, and they had a Chinese golden pheasant. And this is the bird that inspired this movement. And so I got to see it, and I never, it was really neat. It was beautifully golden. It looked like sunlight, like the feathers almost glistened. And it had this incredible boom, explosive kind of like uh, behavior where if you got too close to it, it would just fly, and it would look like a little bit of like, like a sunbeam going across. I could see why they were very inspired by it. So this is the snake creeps down, going to the golden pheasant stands on one leg. Okay. So we're here, we'll do the snake creeps down one more time. I fall, I reach forward, I block my head. Now as my right foot comes forward, my right hand comes with it, and I, sorry, I block my head, I gotta point this out. I block my head, as I move forward, it's at head height, okay? Head height, so it comes up, head height. Then my right foot comes up, and then I bring my right foot and my right hand up, and there's a hint here of a, of a strike. And this in application is where you could do a toe kick if you knew how to do them. And then you do the same thing on the other side. And you come down, and you bring the left foot up, and then you strike. Okay? So this is up and down the center line. One side, hand and foot. Other side, hand and foot. And that is the golden pheasant standing on one leg. Okay, so if I face this way again, okay, step in, step back, drop down, reach forward, protect your head, rise up, there's, this is a block here, block, then you block again, 
and then you attack slightly, and then you block again, and then you attack slightly. Every time you see a move that repeats exactly left and right, you can tell that there's uh, an emphasis then on just being ambidextrous about it, being able to do it that way. But it also is block, block. There's so many arts, Wing Chun, uh, Kung Fu, has a lot of these movements. It's the center line control, all these things. Um, but the application I'll, I would point out is this. Any punch coming at me, I can block this way if I get to the hand before it gets to me, right? So a punch comes in and I just block it like this. Then the fingers can come down. And you remember from the beginning of the form, we have these pressure points here. You can be attacking them here and you kick the foot or kick the shin at the same time, which is a, it's a little delicate to do this, but when you get the sense of it. And what happens is one side of their body collapses because they're being attacked at two points and the brain can't handle it. And then they just, it just tends to make them collapse. So that's the hint of an attack here. You just hint at it. And then you do it again on the other side. You hint at it. So it's not ex uh, over expressed. Okay? Now I'm gonna go back to facing this way and do the whole thing with me. One. Back, drop, reach, protect your head, come up with the right, slight, you know, hint of attack, come up with the left, slight hint of attack. Okay? That okay? Making sense? Okay, try it. Do the sequence, but maybe one or two more times yourselves. Make sure your mind's up. Yeah, it looks like you guys got the, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, we're gonna now go into a huge section of the third set because you already know it. It's basically a repeat of the second set. It'll take a little time to get that to really like make, you know, be clear, but basically you already know the next third of this set. So uh, let's review from the beginning though, and then you'll see how it ties together. So from here and begin. Third set from the beginning. Remember, always blocking a kick first, then a punch, and then a reach. Blocking a kick first, and then a punch, and then a reach. And sure. And then the four positions, you might say, one. Two, three, four. Push. Single lift to the corner. And then cloud hands. One, two, and three. And now a snake creeps down. Remember to come up and protect your head. And then the golden pheasant stands on one leg, twice, I guess. Here, now, step back with your left and push your right hand out and bring your left hand back. 
and we're doing repulsing the monkey. One, two. And that brings us to the point that our right hand is forward, and we continue as if it's the second set. Remember the variation in the second set, so the hands underneath the elbow, and then now this is a here, do the hook punch. This is a little different. Don't take off the helmet, you just turn, and then you do a strike and another strike. And then you drop your right arm and you do the sequence exactly the same from there. Continues just like the second set. And then last time, cloud head. So three times in total, two times in the third set, one time in the second set. And then, as always, exit cloud hands to single whip to the side. And then it changes a lot. <laughs> so there you go. See, you got the next big chunk is already in your mind. I'll cover the difference, but we'll review it a few more times before we go move forward. But the difference is really simple. Um, it's that corner move where I do the here and I do the hook punch. So if I do the hook punch towards the camera on the second set, I turn and my hand comes around the back of my head and then out, right? It's taking off the helmet here. The third set now, all you do is take your hand from here and turn your body and let your hand drop. That's it. It just is just pulled this way. And then as you do that, your left hand comes out for a strike the, this way. So we'll do that a couple of times and then we'll do the whole thing and you'll see it's, it's not a big difference. So if you go to the corner, you've just deflected and done a hook punch here. Don't move your hands, simply turn to the right, cat stand. Now, from here, pull your right hand back and strike out with your left, and then strike out with the right. This move is sometimes called the two forks of the snake's tongue, right? Because the snake's have those four tongues, so one, two. But you see, it's just pulling down. So, uh, one more time. Here, I turn and I one, two. Okay, so the third set is largely a throw. I'm going to grab someone, I'm going to take them and either get them up like this or get them like this and have it so that I can throw them down. So the around the head part is to get the maximal throw out of it. But in the second set, or the third set, sorry, you can think more like I'm here and I grab the arm, I grab some part of the body and I turn and pull and strike. So tell you what, we can do it this way. If you guys, um, do a right hand punch towards the camera, okay? And I come up like this to block, so I'm on the inside of your right hand, inside. And then I grab, my right hand grabs your arm and turns and pulls this way. And then as I do that, I strike with my left. And what happens is you open up the side of your neck and that's where I'm striking. It's right into the side of the top part of the neck right here, okay? And then twice. So that's, that's all, that's the only difference. Um, let's do that facing the camera though. So we grab and pull, left hand comes out, and then right hand comes out. Close your right hand and drop the back of the fist down, around, and do a hook punch. And now you're doing exactly the same thing you did in the second set. 
You see, that's how they connect. It's just this happens, and then it's all back to familiar territory. Okay? That good? Yeah? Okay. So let's, how much time we got? Let's just review where we left off to that point, and you'll see, uh, we'll, we'll do this a few more times. So then we just finished the first cloud hands. The snake creeps down. Come up. And then we do golden peasant stands on one leg. And then we step back and we do repulse the monkey. One, two. We only do it twice, but then the rest of it's just like the second set. And I'm going to go a little fast just to get through it for the moment. This part of it that we know. Eagle spreads its wings. One, two, three. Push down, come up, settle. Three circles. One, two, three. Up, out. Deflect, hook punch. Now, slowly turn, strike with the left, strike with the right. And then the sequence comes back to its normal dynamic. And then you continue. This is all the same. This is all the same. Single whip. And then cloud hands. One, two, three. And then out, and that is as far as we've gone today. But that's at least 70 75 percent of the third set. So you're the last chunks coming up, um, and then you'll you'll have the whole form. That's really impressive. So good work, everybody. Um, final thing, then, too, because I brought this up today. Paying attention to your own behaviors is a big part of the development of the deeper understanding of the art. That fundamental idea that life has this choice between sort of a fear-based response and a, and a, and a, and a I would say an exploratory interest-based ex response is one to pay attention to yourself. Because, well, look at this, I'll put it this way, I'm trying to be very quick. If you watch a nature documentary and you see, like say a lion attacking a wildebeest, right? One of those big buffalo looking things. And the wildebeest gets away. It's when it first gets away, stress levels are at the height of stress, right? But 15 minutes later, it's completely calm and chewing on its grass and just hanging out. It doesn't hold on to that response any longer than it needs it. People, unfortunately, have memory, and memory traps us sometimes in coming back to that initial <laughs> moment. And so the form is to teach you to reprogram that again and again and again every day to stay relaxed and let the challenges come and act and do and continue to engage without being frozen in that, in that state. So that's a, it's a good thought. And uh, that's what I wanted to finish with. So thank you. That's it. <laughs>